so we have muted everyone and uh, only the panelists will be able to unmute themselves the mute meeting is being recorded it will be available on our facebook page uh, let me welcome you to the 88th edition uh, with the teacher of teachers today on 10 years of poxo developmental implications for evidence eliciting next slide please let me hand over the session to Professor Dr. Sofan Pati, sir, Chairman of this program. Sir, over to you. Uh, sir, please unmute. Yes, I have unmuted. Thank you, Aleem, and thank you, Amri. We have got two vibrant moderators with us all the while. I welcome them, Dr. Amrit Patajoshi and Dr. Lim Chiddeki. Please glass over the slides. Yes, Dr. Amrit Parjoshi and Dr. Adim Chiddeki. Next slide, please. Our chairperson, Dr. Devasis Kunnar, who did his postgraduate in psychiatry from Ranchi, CIP, and he is a private practitioner in Badwan and Kolkata, is the president of Indian Association of Child and Adolescent Mental Health. Now, he, had, he is vice president and president elect of West Bengal branch of Indian Psychiatric Society. He is working as a consultant secretary for the last 26 years of experience. He had had neurology training from Nimans Bangalore and training in older psychiatry from England and child psychiatry from Canada. He has got a variety of experience and I do think that he would contribute a lot to this program. Next, please. Dr. Ume, Dr. Umesh Nagapurkar. Welcome, sir. He is an alumnus of BJ Medical College, Pune. He is ex-lecturer of Maharashtra Institute of Mental Health, Pune. He is a practicing psychiatrist since 1966, a long time. And he is secretary of IPS Nasik local branch. And he is vice president of IPS Western Zone branch. Welcome, Dr. Nagapurkar and Dr. Devasis Koner. Now, one has to introduce the speaker and the other the slides. Uh, and the other one will introduce the topic. Uh, Dr. Devasis Koner and Dr. Nagapurkar, Shaman of introduced the speaker, it is being displayed, and then the other person will. You can talk over here in this platform, no problem. We are very informed. Dr. Nagapurkar will introduce our speaker. Hello. Umesh, sir. Umesh, sir. Unmute. Uh, yeah. Yes. Aap introduce karenge, ya, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then slide is here, you introduce, and then Dr. Devasis will be introducing the topic, and the meeting will go to the man of the day, Dr. Sekhar Sasadri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm also very eager. First, a humble <laughs> submission that while you introducing, you unfortunately, it was, I think, printing mistake, some kind of that. I am practicing in Nasik since 1996, not 66, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much, IPS Odisha branch for... This is not a lot of money, no matter what. Don't do a lot of Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tofan Pati, sir, my good friends, Salim and Amrit, for having me here today in this session. It, is, it has been almost more than one and a half years now. This program is running very successful and very popular among psychiatrists in India and abroad also. I happened to listen to Dr. Shekhar Shishadri a couple of times earlier also online. And Dr. Shekhar Shishadri has been associated with child psychiatry in India along with Dr. Shobha and Dr. Savita Balotra. I happened to meet him in 1990 I remember still in Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Conference in Pune when we were students. His work in the area of child sexual abuse and intervention has helped several of us. And uh, his Samvad, Niman's Initiative and uh, Child Project dot in has been extremely useful resource for all of us uh, lay psychiatrists. So I think the information over here, everyone could read, but this happened to be my personal introduction of Dr. Shesha Shetadri. 
over to our co-chairperson. Hello, good evening. I'm Devasis. Uh, uh, it is a real uh, uh, pleasure for, for me to be here. Uh, I have been asked to introduce the topic. Actually, uh, I learned the topic from Sekhar Sisadri. Whenever he talked about it, I listened to it and I learned it. So I'll be uh, just uh, giving a few things that uh, I understand. Uh, Boxo has been a real development in the um, Indian legal system, uh, which act actually laws were there earlier also. Laws were there in fragmented manner. Means, uh, the acts were there for punishment when uh, children was uh, children were um, uh, harmed sexually uh, in some way or other, but uh, with POXO, things got consolidated. We uh, have uh, all, everything related to children uh, got consolidated into this act and which uh, came into um, start at uh, um, 2012 and 10 years. In these 10 years, there have been a lot of development uh, development mainly uh, from uh, two angles. Means one is the crime and punishment, which is legal and police. Um, uh, how to do it? How to um, uh, how to record? How to interview? All those things are their department also. But psychiatrists uh, and psychologists have contributed a lot. Uh, the one of the pioneer and one of the main person um, is Dr. Sekhar Sisadri. So, uh, and there have been many psychologists who have been uh, of, um, who have been contributing to this field. Means uh, uh, developmental implications for evidence eliciting means we have to be sensitive. The methods have to be in a way that it doesn't overwhelm the child and uh, doesn't harm the child and confidentiality and other issues. Uh, they have to be developed and they have been developed a uh, uh, lot over this period. So we'll hear from Dr. Sekhar Sisadri uh, how things have taken shape and how much we know and how much we still need to improve uh, those issues he'll be discussing. It is always a pleasure to uh, have uh, Dr. Sekhar Sisadri as a speaker. Uh, I remember uh, some 30 years ago, or some 25, 30 years back, uh, in one of the meetings, he was telling that it is as prevalent uh, in, in India also. So I had uh, raised a doubt and he said that you don't ask, so you didn't, don't get. So uh, uh, but later I realized that uh, with the coming data that really these things are important um, uh, issues of our society also. My impression was that it is more in the West and not here because West where, uh, West started talking about it earlier. So uh, my impression uh, was on that basis, but I realized that these are very important issues and we have been learning from him. So again, we are with him to learn about the topic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Devuda. And uh, I think it is also a special uh, moment because uh, both the president and the vice president of the Indian Academy Association of uh, Child and Adolescent Mental Health are present here. Devuda, as you know, is the president and uh, I'm the vice president of the association. And what could be more fitting uh, than in this occasion 2022, which is 10 years of POXO, uh, that uh, I was able in my discussion with uh, Alim Bhai uh, to work uh, on this uh, topic and, and present it for your consideration. As uh, Devuda pointed out, the culture of denial uh, and the conspiracy uh, of silence I beg your pardon, I, I think I've hit the wrong <laughs> screen share. Let me rectify that. 
there we are. The culture of denial and the conspiracy of silence uh, that constituted child sexual abuse uh, persisted till our uh, efforts to mainstream it in psychiatry has resulted in a scenario where increasingly we are beginning to be called upon to assist children uh, from this predicament. Friends, what I've chosen for you today in recognition of 10 years of this law having come into existence, uh, POXO was promulgated in 2012, is to focus on a very niche area, which is the developmental implications for evidence eliciting, not evidence gathering. Uh, and there is a very significant difference between evidence eliciting and evidence gathering. This is in the context of what we are increasingly presenting as transdisciplinary approaches in the practice of child mental health. It is not enough for a mental health professional to diagnose post-traumatic stress disorder. You have to assist a child in the secondary traumatization that takes place in trial processes. It is not enough for a judge to listen to testimony and adjudicate. Who is the child that you're talking to? Two years old, five years old, eight years old, eight years old with intellectual disability, hearing and speech problems. So how do you really elicit uh, evidence? And as Umesh pointed out, uh, I do represent Samvad here, which is a national initiative and integrated resource for child protection, mental health and psychosocial care. Uh, in the department that I retired from in November last year, but with which I continue in a full-time advisory capacity. We are functional now in 29 states and a bit on that a little later. Let's look at some fundamental questions. What are the issues of child witnesses in CSA cases? Why are they important? Why are issues of child witnesses in child sexual abuse cases important. As pointed out, the enactment of POXO was in 2012. And uh, the need for child victims to provide testimony in the background that what happens in child sexual abuse often is that only the child and the accused may be present, that there is often no corroborating evidence. And one of the many contexts where children now interface with the law, CSA being a criminal context, and this is why issues of child witnesses in CSA cases are important. Let's examine some key questions. Can children be competent witnesses? What developmental abilities make for a competent child witness? How do we determine whether a child has the developmental capacity for provision of valid and reliable evidence? How do you assess a child's developmental abilities for provision of evidence? What methods can we use to assess child witness competency? And what should be mental health professionals report to the court? What should this report consist of? As you ponder over these questions, let's look at what the dimensions of child witness competence are. The capacity to observe an event, the ability to recall the event, sufficient communication skills that convey that memory, the ability to distinguish between fact and fiction, and the capacity to appreciate 
one's duty to tell the truth in the court. Ab ye jo chokhat jo hai, ye dimensions jo hai ki kisi bache ne yon shoshan ya yon dorjan ye ka anubhav kiya hai, experienced and endured. You are not only experiencing and enduring an event, but there is an observational part of that element. And imagine how you expect a child to actually code through observation the memories of that event so that it is subject to recall. Now, look at this, friends, Indian Evidence Act jo hai, and Boxo 2012, what are the dilemmas posed? And what does the Indian Evidence Act state? It states that the minimum age of child witness, all persons shall be competent to testify unless the court considers that they are prevented from understanding the questions put to them or from giving rational answers to those questions by tender years. Tender years. Extreme old age disease, whether of body or mind, or any other cause of the same kind. There's no fixed age below which children are incompetent to give evidence. Ab sawal ye uthta hai, what is the definition of tender years? What do we mean by tender years? Evidence Act. In ascertaining the competency of the child witness, the Indian Evidence Act states that a person of any age is competent to give evidence if he or she is able to, number one, understand questions put to him or her as a witness, and two, to give answers to them which can be understood. So the decision about the competence of a child witness must depend on the good sense and the discretion of the judge. But what is the age of the child? What are the developmental abilities of the child vis-a-vis -vis speech, cognition, and memory? Does the child have intellectual disability? And what do we mean by the judge's discretion? Now, if the judge were to ask, pointing to a picture in the courtroom, ki ye kiska hai? and the child says, ye Gandhi Baba ka tasveer hai. And the judge says competent, or the judge says, Aaj nashte mein kya khaya? And the child says, Dosa khaya ya puri bhaji khaya. The judge says that, okay, the child is competent. Is this what we mean by understanding questions put to him or her as witness? Now, the challenges and tensions in eliciting evidence from child witness, particularly in an adversarial justice system. On the one hand, there is the need for accuracy, detailed narratives on abuse, identification of the abuse, and the ability to withstand cross-examination. And then there is the child witness, which, as I mentioned, the issues of language, comprehension, cognition, anxiety, and trauma. So the role of the mental health professionals is to navigate these challenges and tensions by providing developmental assessments to the child, communicating with the court to provide information on the child's developmental capacities and recommendations for whether the child can provide testimony and conditions and assistance the child will require in order to provide this testimony. So, ye aapka patra hai aur ye aapki zimmedari hai. Now, you may recall uh, in many sessions ago that I said that one of the deficiencies in postgraduate training in psychiatry is that ye sab padhate nahi hai. And this is what we have been pressing to be included. And this is what uh, Debuda uh, uh, and, and my role as executive members of the Indian Association of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry have been doing in terms of the course that we are running uh, as well. This is indeed part of the program that we are doing as uh, our responsibilities in Sambhad. Now, 
की एरियाज ऑफ चाइल्ड डेवलपमेंट अब फिजिकल है सोशल है लैंग्वेज कोग्नेटिव एंड इमोशनल सो दैहिक विकास सामाजिक विकास भाषा बौद्धिक विकास और भावनाओं का विकास ये पांच क्षेत्र में अगर आप बाल विकास को देखें अब सवाल ये उठता है कैन बी एलिस्टेड एविडेंस फ्रॉम टू ईयर ओल्ड चार साल का बच्चा हो गया अ टेन ईयर ओल्ड विद इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी अ ट्वेल्व ईयर ओल्ड विद स्पीच इन हियरिंग डिसेबिलिटीज अ फोर्टीन ईयर ओल्ड विद स्पीच इन हियरिंग डिसेबिलिटीज प्लस इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी a 15 year old with average cognitive speech and language capacities but severe ptsd to sawal ye uthta hai ki evidence eliciting me chunauti kya hai in a case where there are deficits in a given domain as described here and how will we overcome or navigate these challenges are there certain instances in which it is not possible to elicit evidence Uh, from the child let's look at it in a little more detail when we go to developmental stages in child children's ability to disclose abuse look at this age group infancy the ability so we have age we have ability to provide abuse narratives and we have the emotional and behavioral symptoms indicative of abuse so if you look at infancy 0 to 18 months obviously they'll be unable to make disclosures and cases can be substantiated only if there's an eyewitness or the perpetrator confesses or the infants are found to have std sperm or semen in their examination so we are looking at physical and medical evidence now at this age group fear responses being fussier than normal reluctance to have diaper changes and at one and a half two years of age occasionally genital handling and so on are some behavioral indicators that you may have to consider now if you move from infancy to toddlerhood they also have limited communication skills so they are unlikely to report but simple phrases may be the only clue that something has happened such as o e p p daddy while pointing to their genital area and you know that toddlers cannot sequence time and place very well and will not be able to tell you of that something has happened when it happened or even where it happened only some children may know their body parts or understand right from wrong so to substantiate abuse again a witness a confession or medical evidence is required but they may show fear and anxiety they may mimic sexual acts regressive behaviors difficulty in to- toilet training sleep disturbances and emotional uh, irritability tantrums and clinginess to caregivers if you move to preschoolers during an interview one must be aware that they become easily distracted or revert to physical activity or phrases such as i don't know i can't remember you may get small excerpts with minimum details some disorganized thought processes again time uh, temporal and spatial relationships are poorly defined kuch unko pata hota jab din bed time wagera on occasion they may be specific enough to give details to be a good witness in court demonstration is a better tool they may confuse he she me substantiation may rely on finding acute injuries but asking short specific questions without being leading to draw demonstrate might be easier than verbal communication at all times making the child feel at ease and safe because they are fearful so they may exhibit sexualized play somatic complaints genital discomfort nightmares tantrums withdrawal mood lability and other psychosocial problems at elementary school reluctance and tentativeness role play is an appropriate tool drawing use of dolls building a rapport before interview begins is important because frequently they are embarrassed and uncomfortable and one way to ease their discomfort is to engage them in simultaneous activities like drawing to yahan confusion conflict guilt shuru ho jata hai but you may find the same behavioral symptoms either internalizing or externalizing some 
physical symptoms, particularly regressive symptoms like aneurysis or somatic symptoms. And in adolescence, more at ease, a more formal approach to interview, keep your questions brief and clinically oriented, yet let them know their feelings and opinions are important, and reassure them that they are not at fault for what has happened. So this whole shame and guilt that the abuse was their fault and not only do they feel uncomfortable about sexual molestation, but awkward and self-conscious about their own bodies. And finally, in adolescence, to maximize the outcome of the interview, an open, direct approach is usually the best. At all times, being serious about their concerns and supportive of their needs and being honest with them. So here, defined aggressive behaviors, high-risk behaviors, uh, self-cutting, and they may present again with somatic complaints and dissociative symptoms. So the modes for assessing child witness competency, which is the substance of what I want to share with you today, is something like this. Subse pehli baat ye hai ki cognitive ability, the ability to identify objects and a very preliminary process in child forensic interviewing is something like this. Thank you for coming today, Kriti. I have another surprise game for you today. Wow, another game? Yes. And let me show you now how it works. So, you see many cards on the table, right? Yes. So, the cards this side have some pictures on them and they also have questions. And the cards that side have pictures on them and they are the answers to these question cards. So, here's how we play it. I will pick up a question card and read you the question and ask and you would have to tell me what the answer is or what you think the best answer is. I'm ready. Great. Right, let's start. What do you need when it rains? I use an umbrella. Yes, very good. Can you put that together? Yes. Question and answer. Very good. What does a baby need when it is hungry? Baby needs milk. Excellent. Here. What do you need to open a lock? I know this. Door? We need a key. Yes. Can I put it? it? Yes. Okay. Um, did you have a cake on your birthday? I had. What cake was it? It was a big chocolate cake. Like this one? Yes, exactly like this. And what did you blow out on the chocolate cake? Lots of candles. Yes, correct. When it is cold, what do we wear? Mm, sweaters. That is right. So as you see, this is a basic activity where we start with uh, some simple objects. So we've established the child's cognitive ability in terms of identification of objects and their function. If we go further into the cognitive ability to describe actions and behaviors, this is how we do it. So now, Kriti, we are going to play another game. Okay. Wow, new game. New game now. So this game is called Action Game. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few things. I will do a few things. I want you to tell me what I am doing. Okay. okay. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Watch me carefully. You are rubbing your nose. Yes. Okay, 
Next one. You are sleeping? Correct. What is that? Uh, I'm doing it's clapping. Yes. Now I'll show you a few pictures and tell me what each person in the picture is doing. Okay? He is brushing his teeth. Correct. Mom is cooking. Yes. What is she cooking? I think she is making dal. Is that your favorite dish? No, I don't like it. What's your favorite dish then? I like to eat porridge. Porridge? With sugar? Yes, with sugar. You know, so as you can see, this activity... So now, Kriti, we are going to... Uh, this activity can be done through uh, actions or it can be done uh, through cards as well. And uh, so we did uh, the cognitive ability to identify objects, cognitive ability to describe actions. And then what we uh, so do is to look at cognitive ability, will looks at recognizing spaces. So this uh, becomes uh, fairly critical to keep in mind as we, uh, these are all methodologies. You see, what are we doing here, friends? We are looking at establishing competency for eliciting evidence. Have a look at this. So just like the other game we played, these um, are some cards with pictures on them and then there are another set of cards here with pictures on them. And again, there are questions and there are answers. Okay? So before we start playing the game, let me ask you a couple of questions as part of the game. Okay? Just to get some practice before we do this. Right? Um, where do we live? We live in a house. That is correct. Right? In your house, there are many different places, right? What are some of the places in the house? Um, the kitchen where my mother cooks. Mm -hmm. Then our living room where everybody comes. Okay. Then my bedroom which has a lot of my toys. Okay. And then my grandparents' room. And then there is a bathroom where we go and take a bath. And okay. then we brush our teeth. And there is a toilet. And there is the roof. Okay. Very good. So now I know all the spaces you have in your house. When you go out of the house with mommy, with daddy and so on, what are all the places you visit outside the house? We go to the park. Mm -hmm. I meet my friends there. We go to my uncle's place, okay. which is very near. I go to the school. Okay. And sometimes to the mall. The mall? What is in the mall? What happens there? You get a lot of toys and we buy clothes and other things. I see. And what do you do in the park? What do people generally do in the park? I play with my friends. There are a lot of swings. I like that. Okay. So, there are places in the house and there are places you go to outside the house. Right? Yes. Like the mall, like the park, like uh, school maybe. Yes. Right? Okay, so let's look at some picture cards. I think you'll find this quite easy then. So first question, where do you sleep at night? I sleep Can on a bed. And where is that bed? In the bedroom. Okay, you want to join it? Very good. Mm. Where do you take a bath? 
in the bathroom. Okay. You take a shower bath or a bucket bath? A shower bath. Okay. So as you can see, again, this activity is done both by discussions. It is done through pictures, but it is also uh, interspersed with some interesting questions which helps the child feel that uh, at ease uh, and that the person who is trying to establish competency is kind of interested in the child's ability. So, so just like... Then we go to the cognitive ability, which is about knowledge of sequences. So you see, we moved from objects to actions, to spaces, to sequences now. Let's see how this takes place. So, Kriti, um, you know how at different times of the day we do different things? Yes. Let's talk a little bit about what we do and things that happen at different times of the day, right? Mm. When does the sun come out? In the morning, when we wake up. Right. And when does the moon come out? At night, when we go to bed. So they come out at different times, right? The sun yeah. in the morning, the moon at night. Okay. When do you brush your teeth? After I wake up in the morning. Right. Um, what time of day do you go to school? In the morning at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock. Okay. Do you go to school before breakfast or after eating breakfast? After eating breakfast. My homework and mm -hmm. then we go to sleep. Okay. So it's quite a busy day. Yes. Waking up, going to school, coming home, then playing with friends, so on. So you said that you go to school in a school bus. Yes, it's what? a big bus. Oh, what color is it? It's a yellow colored bus. Okay. Do many children come on it or few children? Many children. So, some children so from small children. So you can see that children, lot more information is being elicited here. Okay. And who do you sit next to in the school bus? My friend, Akshita. Only these three people. Okay. And what games do you play with them? We play football sometimes and sometimes we skip in the game speed. And then we go into identifying similarities and, and differences. So you can see that there are increasing complexities by which we are actually eliciting the competency of the child witness. And let's see how this is done. So, Kriti, what do you see on these cards? A lot of animals. Correct. So, what I'd like you to do now is see if you can see more than one picture of the same animal. So, for example, what is this animal? Elephant. Do you see another elephant like that? Mm. Yes. Exactly. Here. Okay. Do you see... What is this? A dog? Is I can there find another one. Dog? Here. Very good. What is this? It's a zebra. Is there another zebra? Here. Okay. What is this? A tortoise? Is there another tortoise? Mm. Now this is important because in an adversarial system, this is the kind of tactic that the defense uh, uh, lawyers use to confuse the child uh, to say that uh, was he similar to this person? Then how do we know that this is the accused and not the accused for the 
So in order to establish that the child has the ability, these are some of the techniques that we use to establish competency. No, I think one is yellow, one is pink. Okay. Are these two cards or pictures the same? No, now they are three cats. They have a friend. Okay. And is this and this cat the same? Are these three the same? No, this cat is grey, this is yellow and this is pink. Uh, is this cat and this cat different? Yes, this is a big cat. These are baby cats. And this cat is yellow in colour. Okay, which is the biggest cat? She's the biggest cat. Which is the second biggest cat? Mm, this is the second biggest cat. And so, so this kind of evidence is very important uh, as we go ahead. And some of the final issues in actually preliminary processes in child forensic interviewing uh, actually relies on the whole memory component of it. And let's see how this is done. I see that you have drawn a picture of all kinds of animals. Yes, I love animals. Okay. Have you ever been to a zoo? Yes, with my parents. When was that? Um, it was in December when we had my winter break. Oh, in the winter holidays. This year or last year? This year. It's also my birthday. So my parents took me to the zoo for my birthday. How nice. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I love animals. Can you tell me all that you did on your birthday last year? So I asked my parents, they asked me what do I want and I asked them to take me to the zoo and they took me to the zoo. So we went to the zoo in the morning and then my mother called everybody home and they got me a new dress and when we came back from the zoo, my dad got us a cake and it had a big penguin on it because I love animals and then my friends came over and when my friends came then we parents got me a doll mm -hmm. my friend got me a basketball ring so my mum told me one day before it was a surprise that we will sandwiches were there she put tomatoes in it and potatoes in it and a lot of cheese so you can see that what the child worker is trying to do is to test, test the memory using an anchor event, which was the birthday. And this is called uh, scaffolding. Uh, and scaffolding is a very important technique to use. And let's see how this interview proceeds. Okay. Um, that's an interesting dress. Never knew there were penguin dresses. And you said your aunt and uncle and grandparents were there. You also said you had friends at the birthday party. Who came? My friend Akshita, my friend Karan mm -hmm. and Ruchi. And two friends who are my neighbors. You see that uh, this is the way that the memory testing is done. Then we move into identification of body parts and this is how that goes. So Kriti, today we are going to play a name game. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see whether Kriti can name all the different parts of her body. That's the game. Okay. So let's go one by one. What is this? This is your nose. Where are Kriti's eyes? Here. What is this? Mm, lips. Teeth. Tongue. Mm, where is Kriti's head? Here. And her head? Here. So they are using an interaction between the two of them to really uh, assess 
ascertain and confirm that the child has the ability to identify uh, body parts. I beg your pardon. So, Kriti, today, and then, Kriti is uh, arms. And and as you when proceed, Kriti eats her food, it all goes into her tummy. Yes. What is this part called? Chest. Okay. Uh, on the chest, there are two things. What is that called? Boo Okay. So, so, whatever the child uses as a terminology is so documented, but then it is later confirmed by How many pointing boobos are there? Up. Two. Okay. Right. Um, what is this? This is neck. Okay. If this is Kriti, can you, you show me where her Nunu is? Here. Can you show me exactly where it is? Between the legs. Here. Okay. That is the Nunu. And this? This is the bum. Okay. So now, we named all the different body parts. Let's see what we do with different parts. What do we do? We eat an ice cream. That's true actually. So that's how, uh, and, uh, and finally, in order to test the child's descriptive ability, this is the kind of technique that one uses. So Kriti, what do you see in this picture? This is a boy. He's playing with his brother and mm -hmm. this is his mother. He wants to play with the brother and the mum is talking to him and there are a lot of toys. He got these toys for his brother. They want to play together but his brother is too tiny. That's why the brother cannot play and the mum is saying that you wait. Okay. And what color is the mother's sari? Mother's sari is blue color and she's also feeding the baby. Oh. So she's saying wait because the baby is very hungry. Okay. And what is happening here on this side? Then because the brother is not playing, he goes out to play with in the park. And in the park there is a cat, there is a dog. Mm -hmm. And then these are some other animals all playing. He ha these are all his. Mm -hmm. This mouse is Choo Choo. Mm -hmm. This goat is Moo. He's holding something in his hand. What is that? He's holding sunglasses because it's. So as you can see, the descriptive ability is established. Then we have the whole truth and lies issue, which is quite significant. And let's see. How that is done. So Kriti, as you know, many children just like you uh, come here and I talk to them to find out what happened, what was difficult, what was confusing for them, what made them sad. And um, so that we understand, I understand what exactly happened to them, we need children to tell the truth. So you see how the child worker is explaining to the child. So this part under POXO in terms of, and this is not tutoring. This is preparation permitted by, and these are standard processes which are internationally recommended about how you basically uh, elicit competence of the child to, uh, to, to give testimony. So uh, I beg your pardon. So proceeding further, on the same. So Kriti, as you know, to find out what happened, what was difficult. And um, so that we understand, I understand what exactly happened to them. We need children to tell the truth, right? That is tell what has really and truly happened to them. Now, just so that we understand what the difference is between what is true and what is not true. 
let's play a small game okay if i tell you that kriti's hair is pink is that true or not true not true my hair is black correct if i were to say kriti is wearing a red dress that's true okay if i say this is a lion is that true no, or not true that's a parrot okay if i say this is a fish is it true or not true yes that's nemo the fish. If I say kriti is smaller then him would that be true or would that be a lie that's a lie i'm not a baby so, this is the series of steps that we take as i've uh, attempted to demonstrate to you through these training videos that we've developed and you can see that communication with uh, the court and reporting and documentation based on this uh, eliciting of compet uh, competency so a mental health assessment any psychiatric disorders including their context a developmental assessment and overall developmental assessment using standardized skills and performers specific assessments of child witness competence and ability as i have discussed so far detailed documentations of activities and methods used to establish developmental activities and the conclusion can the child provide valid and reliable testimony followed by recommendations what accommodations does the child witness need to provide testimony such as psychiatric treatment and therapy or the length of deposition or frequency of breaks or speech and hearing and expert assistance and with the uh, recommendation of the support person uh, as mandated in foxo with the kind of clinical assessment so what a mental health professional needs to do is to communicate with the court through documentation all these parameters which are important this is followed um, essentially by uh, some things that i would like to share with you friends so my intention in today's session was to take you through a series of steps which speak about the developmental implications of evidence eliciting so if you want to elicit evidence these are the kind of steps that you have to establish before you actually elicit the evidence on this occasion of thursday musings in 2022 which happens to be 10 years of poxo from sambad uh, i just wish to say that sambad is happy to collaborate with institutes of mental health and departments of psychiatry and psychology on all child sexual abuse and poxo related events in fact from 20th to 30th april we are running a residential program from faculty of national and state institutes and centers of excellence for psychiatrists psychologists social workers with long term positions in institutions we still have three or four places left we will bear the cost of the interstate travel and accommodation in nimhan support by sambad please note that this 10 day program is residential uh, we would prefer people to come from state institutes because we want to build this kind of uh, competence in various regions of india we prefer people who have long term positions not senior residents or clinical psychologists who do not have a permanent position because we want to build institutional capacity uh, across the country to support what the mandate of sambad is which is child protection mental health and psychosocial care for those of you who are interested please do mail us at info@nimhanschildprotect.in so that we'd be able to uh, accommodate in the three or four positions that we have left friends these are our social media handles uh, our website is nimhanschildprotect.in you have our twitter handle our facebook uh, and uh, our website as well as our insta uh, handles and and our number i hope that this session has been 
useful uh, for the many of you who've joined in uh, today. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that more than 200 are there uh, in, in, uh, in this session. I'm also happy to uh, note the various comments that have already come on chat. Uh, Ali Bhai, uh, you know, uh, saying it was a great, great demo. And, you know, my brother Amrit saying it was an eye opener. Jyoti, thank you very much for saying it was a comprehensive uh, run through to establish competency. Uh, Fabian, thanks as always uh, uh, for your uh, affirmation. And as Alim has pointed out, do post. Uh, uh, Jyoti, we did run an online uh, uh, program, uh, but the issue is that this, uh, you know, we require a real in depth 10 day program because we want to build solid forensic competencies. Like I said, Samvad wants to propagate transdisciplinary approach. Uh, in, in child mental health. Um, so this is why we are doing it, Sajja, thank you. And I'm delighted to see my friend, Philip John. Uh, and uh, I'm, I have recently returned uh, after a break from Dubai, uh, Philip, and you were fondly uh, remembered because of the phenomenal work that you have done there. Uh, and I hope you have been well, my friend. That, and with that, with some questions coming in with Abhishek and all, but I hand you over uh, to Amrit and to Alim to basically curate the Q&A session. Over to you. So first day chairpersons, I think, for their opening remarks. Yes, yes, yes. For the whole session, sir. Umesh sir and Devasi, sir. Uh, yes, we had a very practical kind of um, session where we um, uh, really learned how to uh, do it um, uh, means the whole process of it was demonstrated and that gives you a real feel of the thing how uh, you it, it increases your curiosity towards many more things that are done for the total assessment and it is good that uh, he has announced a program um, of 10 days for practical uh, practical training. So we'll like um, to have questions and a discussion uh, of the uh, whatever uh, uh, the moderator feels is good from the chats uh, chat and also uh, maybe uh, some um, someone can unmute and put the question and uh, I think uh, we'll have a good discussion. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, thank you, Dr. Shekhar, for a very comprehensive uh, illustration of establishing uh, competencies, cognitive competencies with regards to child's cognitive ability. And uh, it was really a very practical uh, uh, videos. And I think, they, these kind of videos, uh, we learn more from such kind of videos rather than just a theoretical discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Actually, it was a, uh, I think the way you knit the videos together. So the whole, whole thing has come out so well. I think this recording will be watched over and over again. It will be available with us. I'll send it to you, sir, also. So thank you so much, sir. Amrit, we can start the sir. questions. Yeah, uh, sir, sir, when sir started the presentation, he asked a lot of questions. What about this child who has this? What about this child who has this? What about the 10 year child who does not, who has hearing and speech impairment? So one question has come from Sri Vidya. With children who have speech difficulties or hearing difficulty, how does the process of assessment differ? Also, does the law have any special provisions for the same? So we see a lot of abuse occurring with this, this subset of you know, children. So what are the provisions? Are they a little different? Your thoughts on that, sir? Yeah, uh, Amrit, I, I wanted to say that uh, in the Samvad YouTube channel, uh, you will find a recording of a session that I had done for the All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, Mysore, where I specifically address this question of evidence gathering from children with uh, evidence eliciting uh, from children with uh, hearing and speech uh, disability. 
Now, here is the thing. If a child has hearing and speech disability, but does not have intellectual disability, then you can rely on drawings and play to accurately um, uh, elicit evidence. And as, as somebody uh, ha has asked in the chat, I, I think Abhishek asked, uh, do we need to record the assessment session? And indeed, that is very critical uh, to, to record exactly how the uh, evidence was elicited and you present all that data uh, uh, as evidence. One of the most critical things in, uh, in presenting uh, uh, evidence, and in fact, we, in this forensic program, we also have a session on the psychiatrist as an expert witness. Um, and uh, when I had gone in as expert witness, and I want to give you a couple of examples, there, there were a set of six girls in a childcare institution who were actually um, with the connivance of the superintendent of that childcare institution sort of made to escape and the whole idea was to traffic them uh, for sex work. And these were girls. Two of them had hearing and speech uh, disability and we had organized for a sign language because they knew sign language uh, for a sign language interpreter to actually uh, do the evidence. Game. Now look at the defense lawyer when I went as expert uh, witness. Doctor, can you tell me the name of the sign language interpreter? Not recorded in the file. Can you show me the referral letter that you've written through the sign language interpreter inviting? Not present in the file. So this is how they can, then how do I know that you even, you may just be making up fictitious that there is no referral letter. You don't even know the name. On which date was it done? So as Abhishek Pratap uh, points out, recording these assessment sessions, uh, whether it is a video recording or whether it is a verbatim recording with the exact date, time, who did it, who was present there, how was it done, and the processes are well documented is exceedingly important. So friends, do have a look at the Samvad YouTube channel the session uh, with the All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, where we have details of how we elicited evidence uh, from children who have uh, hearing and speech deficit. So sorry to interrupt you. So can we have a session on this in th on Thursday musings? You, I would be delighted uh, uh, and to do it. That will be a continuation of this, sir. Maybe in the next five to six weeks, we'll have one session. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting. Is there any problems in recording? Any ethical issues in recording the sessions? Uh, if, see, a lot depends on whether, if, if uh, the context in which the child comes to a mental health professional, if a FIR has already been lodged and the request comes either from the police who is taking statement under 161 or the magistrate who is taking the 164 statement to assist the court, then there is a court order that is mandating your assistant as an expert to elicit the evidence. On the other hand, if a child has come to you primarily and an FIR has not been lodged and the charge sheet has not been filed yet, then, now this is very critical because if your expert evidence is filed along with the charge sheet, it strengthens the case for the prosecution. And if that evidence is not filed with the charge sheet then, so it is the same ethical considerations of taking permission uh, for a, a, with any kind, when you do psychotherapy session recording, you know, you take the necessary consent from the concerned people uh, and the reason for the recording uh, is actually, so this is standard practice. And if you actually look at the National Child Protection Authority of Sri Lanka, which actually set up the evidence eliciting thing many years uh, you know before us that uh, they have a system of, of video recording and the video recording is presented as, a, as evidence uh, of course the extent to which uh, video recording is accepted as evidence uh, in the court is subject to other documentation that goes with it which is on which date was done who did it who was there under what circumstances was it done? Uh, is it encrypted or not? So, so there are many other issues that one needs to keep in mind about the acceptability of... Uh, uh, so 
but having said that don't you have video recordings of traffic offenses <laughs> that you use to find people so you know these are things that a prosecution actually needs to argue that uh, over to you yeah sir actually i think uh, these things should be very important because uh, from a, a point of view of defense lawyer they will defend uh, uh, defend vociferously because the punishment is stringent so i think all the nuts and bolts should be in the right place otherwise they can they can puncture your testimony uh, nimi wants to uh, congratulate you and ask how can we ensure and assess the child is not giving a false testimony it has been happening that children are forced to give false testimony for the benefit of adults and let me add suppose the child is giving a false testimony out of without any uh, provocation out of out of uh, you can say uh, himself or herself as a, as a clinician uh, the question that one would often ask is what how old is the child and what is the motivation for this assumption or 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 concern uh, that this may be a false allegation i want to draw your attention friends uh, uh, nimi nimi michael is a very familiar name it's a, it's uh, this is an old friend uh, from uh, the mans if i'm not mistaken hello nimi and uh, is basically this i draw your attention uh, please read one of my papers in indian journal of psychiatry uh, entitled our failure to protect sexually abused children where is your willing suspension of disbelief um uh, now if something has happened or not happened and the there is an allegation my point is always this that if you were to make an error of judgment as a mental health professional should your error of judgment be in favor of belief or should be should it be in favor of disbelief so it has not happened uh, the child says that it has uh, something has happened it has not happened you believe the child says something has happened it has not happened you do not believe so far so good the child says something has happened you believe good child says something has happened it has happened and you do not believe you see the 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 not just the danger but the disservice that you're doing by making an error of judgment in favor of uh this believe your error of judgment should always be in favor of belief my uh, uh so it is very difficult for a young child uh to give a false uh, a allegation that because they do not have that kind of knowledge of sexuality to so we have written a lot on the whole issue of tutoring and there is a whole difference between tutoring and preparation and which is where a comprehensive you, you remember when i spoke about the assessment so are are there Uh, uh, parental marital issues involved and it, uh, would there be an instance where a child is being tutored to give a false allegation because there is a pre-existing marital discourse and there is a divorce in a custody case pending then so and do they constitute the majority of cases in which a child sexual abuse case actually comes to the court that's the framework friends that we need to keep in mind Uh, so but do read uh, our paper in indian journal of psychiatry our failure to protect sexually abused children where is a willing suspension of disbelief uh, written co-written uh, by uh, by me uh, with the primary author being shila ramaswami who is the technical and operational lead of sambhag alim amrit over to you sir this is another another question that that that's that's the most important question actually in the whole scheme of things how to make the parents guardians to agree for reporting of these child sexual abuse in totality so many cases go unreported even when they come to us we try to convince they tell no it is somebody in my family the whole family will be destroyed this is going to happen you know somewhere the blame is being put on the child you know i see a lot of blame games on the child they are shamed and 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 the whole trail leads to a lot of things sir how do you handle this sir amrit uh, one of the issues uh, with with poxo uh, is the issue of mandatory reporting 
Now it is obligatory on the professional to mandatorily report, not just if an abuse uh, is reported to you, but even when you suspect uh, abuse. And the law says that you're liable to prosecution for failure to report. But here's what we need to understand. Mandatory reporting is a process. It is not as though a child reports to you and the very next moment you have to uh, report to the special juvenile police unit. It's a process. Now, the hesitancies that a child or a family may have to report, a child may have disclosed to you and the child may say, please do not tell my parents, otherwise you'll destroy my family. The family may say, we are telling you, but please do not report. We don't want to get into court processes. We don't think, uh, we don't want to get into that jamela. Uh, if you report, then we'll, you know, we'll be finished. You need to understand the nature of their hesitancies, the nature of their anxieties and fear and address them. This also we have written about uh, in our website, which is uh, Nimhan's Child Protect dot uh, in. If you go to our uh, resource materials and our training materials that we have a whole uh, section in the evidence gathering, uh, that is developmental and mental health implications of evidence gathering under POC. So we have a manual. We have a whole section there on the dilemmas of mandatory reporting and the kind of processes that one goes through in, in mandatory reporting. That So there's a sequence of steps to uh, we, when you take them. So you understand their anxieties, you allay them, you tell them about the provision for support people, you talk to them about fast track processes, about the necessity uh, to, to report. You understand the dynamics and the predicament of the family. See what is the best that you can put to do a support structure. Uh, is, is there an extended family would be a support structure, particularly if uh, uh, let's say a close family member is the perpetrator. So there are all these kind of complexities that we need to understand uh, to really also understand what the hesitancies for mandatory reporting are. Amrit, How do we make the uh, parents understand? Suppose they are asking uh, a therapist to tell yes or no, whether the child, whether the abuse has happened or not. So how do we uh, make them uh, understand this, this complexity and how do we psychoeducate them? Uh, Ali, these complexities are always processes. It is not that शाम को बुलाया बैठाया 40 मिनट कुछ बक दिए और ये विश्वास कर लिया कि सब मामला यू नो सेट हो गया इट डजंट हैपन लाइक दैट दैट सो दीस आर प्रोसेसेस दैट नीड टू अनफोल्ड ओवर सेवरल सेशंस यू नो जैसे ब्रेकिंग बैड न्यूज़ के बारे में भी हम अक्सर एमिली डिकिंसन की कविता का उपयोग करते थे टेल ऑल द ट्रूथ but tell it slant. Success in circuit lies too bright for our infirm delight. The truth's superb surprise as lightning to the children eased with explanation kind. The truth must dazzle gradually, else every man be blind. So, Sampurna Sach Bolo, Lekin Tircha Bolo, Dire Dire Bolo. So, it's a question of taking them uh, you know, to these processes. And so, it cannot be a one off session. And this is the mistake that many practitioners make that there has to be a certain gentleness ek nazakat jo hai isme jo nazuk jo barikhya hai isme sukshma tarike se this is very important uh, to to really take them to this process of the kind of understanding ali that you're talking about yeah. sir this is another complicated question that has come by sir, dr sabina rao all the way from outside so what about an adult woman who does not have guardianship with intellectual disability, who might have had a sexual incident with a male who is also intellectually disabled at a protected workplace, and she enjoyed it. It's a complicated issue, but we also need to see it um, in conjunction uh, with the other part of the work that we are doing in children in conflict with the law. You know, a 16 or 17 year old uh, who is accused uh, of an alleged uh, child sexual abuse on a 14 year old or an eight year old or you know, or a six year old that uh, and we've written a lot uh, on on the 
pathways to vulnerability. Uh, does this 16 or 17 year old have intellectual disability? Was this 16 or 17 year old himself or herself uh, abused? Uh, were they exposed prematurely to, to pornography and to peer pressure? Was it a one-off incident? Then? All, uh, so this assessment is exceedingly critical uh, to really look at uh, how we balance uh, a situation where uh, both the perpetrator and the victim have intellectual disability. In fact, friends, we are right now running a disability course. Of course, it's, it's a, a closed course, but uh, hopefully we will put that material uh, out somewhere. And in fact, on uh, 7th of May, the session that I'm doing is a session entirely focused on the issue of disability and sexuality. To, to understand the context of uh, the sexuality of uh, children and adolescents with intellectual disability and, uh, and how one deals with it then. I also see uh, Amrit and Alim uh, that uh, the, as happens in many of my sessions, uh, that an enormous number of issues have been put on chat. I'm happy for you to actually take a screenshot of that and send it to me. I'm happy to do a, to do a content analysis and do another session for Thursday Musings where we take a lot of these questions and I will not do a presentation, but I will do a, a categorization of uh, what themes or domains these questions represent. And uh, I'm happy to do another session going ahead. Sure. sure. So Alim, I think... Yeah. Uh, Sir, will come for another session. Let us not stretch it too much. No. So I think, I think, yeah, let us do a few questions. Uh, we, we have, I think, five, ten minutes we have. So wants to present this as a presentation again with all the questions. You have to get the... Up to you, sir. Do we take the questions or we... Uh... I, I'm quite happy as long as you wish to stretch it. It's. Uh, I just see that... Stretch uh... <laughs> <laughs> So a few few quick questions. Who certifies uh, uh, these children? It is is it a psychiatrist, psychologist, or team? And uh, more than one independent certification is required. By, by and large, what happens, at least from uh, teaching institutions, is irrespective of who has seen the child, uh, it is the head of the unit, or uh, you know, for example. When I was heading child psychiatry, whoever saw the child, I had to go to court. Um, and I'm continuing to go to, uh, despite the fact that I've retired uh, from them hands. Uh, but uh, so that's the way things work. But it is not that uh, uh, psych psychologists are not called upon uh, to, to, to present this uh, 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 particularly if they, they are government psychologists, but it is not th that uh, private psychologists or private mental health professionals cannot be called uh, to, to prevent, uh, to present evidence. So is there any, any manual for uh, uh, assessing children in POXO? Yes, our manual. Uh, it's called Developmental and uh, Mental Health Implications of Evidence uh, Gathering. Uh, so if you look at our website, you will find uh, the manual there. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's there on the website. It's a very comprehensive manual. Yes, sir, please post the link because many questions will be solved there only. No, I will. Should I post the link of the manual, or because it will take me some time to? Uh, the the website is www.nimhanschildprotect.in, uh, uh, and if you navigate the, I, I'm posting all, all, all the. But if you navigate, sure, particularly sure. in the in the training and in the intervention section, uh, or if you go to the search bar and you look at developmental and mental health implications of evidence gathering, you'll find the link there. Amrit, over to you. There's one last question. Sir, 
are children educated about the judicial system and the outcome of the statements for example if the perpetrator is a relative and the process they are involved with prior to collecting evidence when you collect evidence do you talk, talk to them about the judicial system what outcomes might happen with the statements and all absolutely in fact amrit we are in the process of writing uh, we've already written the paper on court preparation based uh, on our experiences with the muzaffarpur case because uh, this was not one child you know these were 40 odd children and as you know the supreme court took the case away from bihar police and handed it to cbi and the supreme court also instructed us to assist the cbi in evidence eliciting and uh, my team went there uh, on several occasions to several institutions uh, it this was a 150 page report that was filed along with the charge sheet and we were part of the support team that assisted in when the case went to trial in the special court in saket in delhi the girls were shifted from patna to delhi for the case and uh, as you know the the trial took place in 2019 the conviction came in december of 2019 and the sentencing in jan of 2020 just before the pandemic uh, hit and you know six to seven people were sentenced to life for the rest of their life that uh, so to provide uh, that kind of support uh, to the children and so court preparation is not the same as tutoring and um, so we are writing a whole paper on on court preparation and i'd be happy uh, to send you when it is ready and then publish thank you so much sir yeah samrit nahi nahi puchho 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 Uh, sir are the courts aware that these are the this is the uh, uh, this is how evidence should be elicited from the child sorry ali you say that again the no, ali my missed the point what was the question uh, uh, do the courts know that this is the this is a proper process of assessment of a child increasingly what ali is? increasingly because samvad like i said works in four verticals mental health education care and protection and policy and law in fact we are in discussion with the national judicial academy in july to hold a national consultation on on uh, poxo and the challenges that we are also uh, working with the state judicial academies and legal services authority so poxo ko leke particularly with this we have already completed work with at least three judicial academies and so this is part of the judicial education work that samvad is doing uh in in quite a bit of detail right? so they are increasingly becoming aware and particularly uh as the there is a change in uh the governance from the scheme mode to the mission mode uh, as you know that uh, the early childhood care and education the anganwadi icds system immunization nutrition has now gone into mission 2.0 and all your one stop centers women helpline has become mission shakti and your child protection child care institution jj act has become mission vatsalya and, and we recently completed a whole set of zonal meetings uh, which were sambad attended and we met uh, people from the state women and child department health department and the judiciary that so uh, this is part of sambad's mandate and this is what we are increasingly doing Sir, sir, I had I had only one question. Before we, I think we should wind up. So, so whenever such a thing happens in an institution, like where things have been kept, so and we are called, how do we go about it? Can we have a session on this, sir? You know, a lot of you know intellectual you know abuses that occur. How do we go about it when when we are called? Then, or do you have any recordings on this, sir? Like it happened in Bihar. It it happens in you know. with time things will you know more things will come to the forefront so yes as... so like i said um, we have a lot of um, material on the website in an institution what is the kind of assessment that can be done to uh, in fact the whole uh, thing about the supreme court thing was based on a social audit done by the tata institute of social sciences so to figure out whether abuse is going on in an institution or not uh, if if you are requested all those assessment tools are there in our website we've already put it out 
Great, sir. Uh, uh, I think we can invite the chairpersons for any final comments yeah. or their contributions. Yes, sir. It was very wonderful discussion. I think we learned a lot and hope to learn again in future. Thank you so much, Dr. C. Shatri. I thank uh, Dr. Tupanpati, Dr. Amrit, and Dr. Alim uh, for arranging such a good session with Dr. Sisadri. And it is um, uh, expected that they will carry it forward and uh, have, have uh, of the next session related to this, which will enrich people further. Thank you so much. Tufan, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sashadri, for the awesome deliberation. And uh, one issue was raised in between that uh, a child may tell a lie. But I believe as doctors, we go with the principle of believing in the patients, be it a child or not. It is not our job to give a verdict. Verdict will be given by the court. Whatever you tell is a part of the presentations before the court. And when the child is abused, child is under stress, we must go with the first thing that we have to believe unless otherwise essential. I do believe in that. And about reporting, it is statutory one has to report, convention report, but the other reporting is becoming very critical. The media reporting, which you don't report, it becomes automatically reported. And that becomes very much traumatic for the child as well as the family. And the parents and their family are there more critically about this media reporting. And at times it happens, I have seen in some cases, it is the family who has gone to the media with the suspicion that police is not doing anything. So these are the critical issues, same child type story. It harasses the child in his in whatever environment he is there. And uh, another part is the uh, rate of uh, conviction. Conviction rate has to rise. It is somewhere around 25-26%. At least in Odisha, it is around 24%. It should rise. But everything is in a positive note. And kudos to the contributions of Dr. Sashadri to not only for children, but also for the legal system. And we await two more sessions from Dr. Sashadri, sir. Two sessions have been done, which we have to do with the knob shirts. We are sorry you could not send, but two sessions have to do with the knob shirts. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. So first of all, from the deepest Areas of the heart, we want to thank Dr. Shekhar Sashadri, always the, you know, somebody who is so in-depth knowledge, small things, he takes up small things, elaborates it, and today's you know, demonstration was fabulous, fantabulous, that's what I would tell. The way, now we know that the child can be a competent witness, we know how to navigate the challenges and tensions of the child, how we can provide developmental assessments for the child, and the way it can be presented in a court of law. So we had, we had lots of questions. As usual, Dr. Shekhar wants to elaborate on those questions and, and, and present it in the next session. Thank you, sir. Thank you also for accepting our invitation to do a session on special developmental you know, kids who are, have special needs like the deaf, dumb, and the intellectually you know, challenged people. Thank you, Devasi, sir. Thank you, Mr. sir. You have been wonderful chairpersons. And the way you have guided us and helped us in the whole scenario is, is, is wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Tufan, sir, for bringing out the most important thing. Uh, you know, when I went into psychiatry, the most important thing that was taught to me, the patients can never lie. So I think that, that that's one thing we have to give the benefit out until unless we have strong reasons not to believe a patient. So that, that goes a long way in, you know, assuring the child even if the parents are not listening to the child, you know, they, they just want to have someone who can listen to them and believe in what they are saying. Because it, it might seem sound very improbable when they talk about a brother or a father doing something to them. Live alone, institution, 
and then happening what is we see commonly but we never hear about parents we don't, don't hear about brothers we don't about mothers you know we, we see a lot of things but but you know like what sir told the whole process of reporting you know there is a caveat ke you there is no time limit for the reporting of a csa and that is where we escape many times and i'm sorry to say that many times we 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 are not you know in the mood to get into that whole thing where the parents are not cooperative but the children might be tutored to tell no i have not told something like that to the doctor because most of the sessions are not recorded like dr alim was telling like when we have a child we are not able to record those things and tomorrow the child might just refuse if the parents pressurize the child that no i have not spoken something like that and so that those are things which we need to navigate properly thank you alim as usual the the backbone of the whole system thank you to all our audience who are always coming in asking questions encouraging us to do more and more thank you torrent thank you to our backroom staff thank you so much we'll meet you again good night have a wonderful holiday weekend and and the song what about the song we have a song that's why i'm telling you to get it 2 minutes earlier say so one song aaj ka mausam new year new year वो यू नो फिर वही मरहूम जगजीत सिंह की आवाज में हमेशा इस तरह के सेशन में तो वही याद आता है ये दौलत भी ले लो ये शोहरत भी ले लो भले छीन लो मुझसे मेरी जवानी मगर मुझको लौटा दो बचपन का सावन वो कागज की कश्ती वो बारिश का पानी वो कागज की कश्ती वो बारिश का पानी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच वेरी 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 डियर संग टू मी अब कहते थे हम आपके साथ ही गुड मुनाद गुड नाइट एवरीबॉडी गुड नाइट थैंक यू देवशी सर तूफान पति सर अमृत भाई गुड नाइट गुड नाइट थैंक यू Thank you, Dr. Conner. Thank you, Dr. Everyone. Thank you. Yeah, Chintan, we can close the meeting now. Yeah.